In the icy, still expanse that lies beyond our solar system, something impossible is bleeding into our reality. It's not a signal, not a spacecraft, not even a message in the manner that we comprehend it, something different and quieter. A visitor from the stars, known as 3i Atlas, is losing 10 pounds of pure nickel per second as it races through our system. But not just any nickel it is refined, industrial grade, and nearly iron-free, something that shouldn't result from any natural process that takes place in the cosmos. Just recently, the James Webb Space Telescope proved what some scientists feared all along. This isn't a meteor, not even an asteroid. It could very well be a piece of technology, a relic, or something far more deliberate. This isn't a discovery, it's a challenge quietly hurled at the feet of humanity. Because if what we're seeing is real, everything we thought we knew about cosmic objects just collapsed. It all began on July 1, 2025, when a telescope array in Chile picked up a fast-moving object slicing across the sky. At first glance, it was just another icy interloper, a comet from the great beyond. But this was only the third confirmed interstellar object in human history, and its velocity 130,000 miles per hour indicated that it came from outside the sun's system. That alone was extraordinary. However, what followed shattered every expectation. When astronomers turned their most powerful instruments toward its coma the glowing halo of gas and dust surrounding its nucleus they expected to find the usual suspects, carbon atoms, water vapor, silicates, and trace metals. Instead, they found something that made no sense. 3 i Atlas was pouring pure nickel into space, not just traces, but 10 pounds each second. And where there was nickel, iron was absent. That was the first red flag. Because in space, nickel and iron are forged together in the same brilliant furnaces, they're cosmic twins. To find one without the other is like discovering salt without sodium. It doesn't happen unless someone or something made it happen. The news spread quickly, but not everyone dismissed it as just an oddity. At Harvard, one astrophysicist saw in this metallic shedding something eerily familiar, not natural, but industrial. On Earth, separating nickel from iron takes energy, technology, and infrastructure. You don't find refined nickel distributed throughout the desert, and you certainly don't expect to see it ejected from a comet into space. This was a process, not a product of chance, he warned. Nature does not do this, industry does. The question suddenly shifted from what 3i Atlas is to who made it. The James Webb Space Telescope was summoned. Its instruments peeled away layers of mystery, revealing not water ice, but a cloud-rich in carbon dioxide, the highest CO2-2 water ratio ever recorded in a space object, 8 to 1, while our comets average just for percent. This was chemically alien, and the metals. They weren't raw or, and constant not a natural leak, but something with a chemical signature, and in that signal, perhaps a code. But chemical anomalies were only the beginning. As astronomers tracked 3i Atlas's trajectory, the unease deepened. It wasn't just passing through the solar system randomly. It was navigating it one by one, making astonishingly precise flybys of Venus, Jupiter, and Mars a statistical impossibility for any natural object. The odds of this path occurring by chance, 0.005%, a cosmic wonder or a manufactured route. Even more suspicious, its closest approach to the sun, its perihelion, happened behind the sun, perfectly timed to obscure it from Earth's instruments when it was at its most active. Coincidence or design? Some now believe this wasn't just a visitor. This was a surveyor moving backward in opposition to the flow of our planets, which are only five tilted, as if it had been programmed to move the way a satellite might skin a city block. A slow, deliberate tour of the inner solar system, collecting data or perhaps transmitting it. The James Webb Space Telescope, with its unmatched infrared eyes, delivered the final blow to conventional theory. Its instruments broke down the spectral fingerprint of 3i Atlas, and the results were stunning. Not only did it confirm that iron was unusually absent, but it also revealed traces of metallic alloys that do not naturally form alloys with properties that suggest purpose. 
Not accident, combinations that on Earth would be used in high-stress environments, spacecraft hulls, energy converters, deep space sensors. Yet, they were drifting freely from an object we thought was just a rock. The alloy ratios, when plotted, showed consistency, almost as if they were released in sequences, patterns. That's when some theorists proposed a chilling possibility. What if the elemental composition isn't just strange? What if it's a language, a message encoded not in spoken or written words, but in atoms the signature of a civilization so advanced it doesn't use sound or light, but chemistry to speak? At first, scientists thought the release of nickel and gas from 3I Atlas was the result of conventional cometary outgassing, heat from the sun triggering volatile substances to explode from the nucleus. But deeper analysis revealed something strange. The release was too uniform, too controlled, and too smooth. Unlike typical comet outbursts, which spike and fade chaotically, this emission maintained a consistent rate. Not only that, the direction of the gas flow was off-axis, not aligned with where sunlight should have caused sublimation. In fact, the ejection appeared directional. That's when researchers started to reevaluate everything. What if this wasn't outgassing at all? What if it was propulsion not in the sense of rocket engines, but something subtler, like microthrusting via material ejection, an established theoretical strategy for deep space maneuvering? The kind of system an ancient probe might use to correct its course solely by using internal resources, disguising its course changes as natural emissions a sort of concealment through physics, camouflaging intention beneath what appears to be chemistry. To many in the scientific community, 3i Atlas is beginning to look like an improved version of Oumuamua, another alien visitor from outer space that defied explanation when it tumbled through our solar system in 2017. However, where Oumuamua was quiet, small, and elusive, Atlas is bolder, brighter, and far larger in size. Both objects display non-gravitational acceleration. Both show chemical anomalies, and both took trajectories that feel deliberate. But there's a key difference. Atlas is shedding highly specific materials. It's as if the stakes have escalated. Some theorists now suggest Oumuamua was a scout or an early test, and 3i Atlas is the next phase of device not simply passing through, but interacting with our solar system, executing maneuvers, issuing signals, or perhaps even evaluating responses. And we, caught in its wake, are only just beginning to realize that perhaps, just perhaps, this is not random at all. Maybe it's a series of events and encounters, and 3i Atlas is just the second note in a much larger symphony we were never meant to hear all at once. Amid the growing intrigue, another disturbing reality has emerged. Some of the data now surfacing about 3i Atlas was gathered months ago and sat unprocessed. Deep sky surveys, private observatories, even defense-oriented sky-watching systems picked up metallic signatures, trajectory inconsistencies, and emission anomalies, but either failed to flag them or never shared the findings publicly. It wasn't until independent scientists and citizen researchers began correlating notes that the full picture emerged. And at that point, a chilling question followed. Why didn't the agencies warn us earlier? Some consider them to be overwhelmed. Others think the anomaly was too subtle to classify. But a growing number suspects something more strategic that someone recognized how implausible this really was and chose instead to delay, to observe not just the object but our reaction to it. Because in an environment where light travels at a slower rate than information, the real data might not be coming from 3 Atlas in any way. It might be coming from us. As the debate rages on, a philosophical shift is starting to take hold. Maybe 3i Atlas is not present to make a statement. Maybe it is the message a vessel built not for speed, not for return, but for durability across millennia. A survey that was never intended to enter but to leave a chemical fingerprint behind that was so distinct it couldn't be ignored. A trail of metals and gas designed to perplex any civilization capable of recognizing it. In this view, 3i Atlas becomes more than a visitor. 
It becomes a signal in material form, one that doesn't use language, light, or code, but elemental complexity. Its materials nickel-rich, iron-free. Alloyed may not have been deliberately distributed debris. They may be breadcrumbs, each one placed to provoke thought, not contact. And if that's true, then the object itself may not be as significant as what it causes us to ask. Because the actual signal might not be the one we're receiving, but the one we're now sending back out simply by acknowledging its existence. When orbital analysts plotted the trajectory of three atlas in three-dimensional space, an unsettling pattern started to appear. Its path wasn't just mathematically unlikely. It aligned with gravitational assists from multiple planets in a way that seemed orchestrated. First Venus, then Mars, then a nearly flawless slingshot flyby past Jupiter. Each flyby adjusted its velocity just enough to shift its course precisely, like a probe using the solar system as a navigation grid. Still more disturbing was its inclination, just five off the ecliptic, retrograde, but not erratic. There was no wild interstellar fragment here that bounces off of gravity wells. It was following a plan, one invisible up until this point. It's as if 3i Atlas was pre-programmed to succeed close enough to each planet without causing orbits, without drawing attention, but just close enough to collect data or observe. In the vastness of space, coincidence fades quickly. And when paths align like this, there's only one word that remains, design. When the James Webb Telescope aimed its infrared eye at 3 Atlas, it wasn't just looking for chemical composition. It was listening, in its own way, for order. And what it found has quietly shaken the confidence of many in the scientific community. The metallic readings didn't just confirm the presence of engineered alloys. They revealed a pattern of repeat distribution, like pulses. Bursts of material emission timed in. Every time Atlas entered or passed close to a planet's new zone of gravitational influence, it released a brand new group of exotic material, each with a slight chemical signature. Web spectrographs recorded it with great accuracy. Also, when the data was laid out across time, a pattern appeared not random, not biological, not even geologic, systematic, like an update or worse, a report being sent back home. Buried in the web data was one more detail initially overlooked. Among the alloys being released from three atlas was a rare combination of elements, vanadium, tungsten, and a trace of technetium. These are used in earthly nuclear reactors, deep space shielding, and advanced material science. But technetium poses the greatest threat. It has no stable isotopes. It does not occur naturally in any significant quantity. It's a product of refinement, of reactors, and supernovae. To find it drifting through space in a pure, isolated form suggests one of two things. Either this object passed through a dying star and survived intact a probability bordering on zero, or it was built using purposeful inclusion of a material that signals sophistication beyond natural astrophysical processes. In a nutshell, the metal itself is a statement, a whisper from across the void that says, we know what fusion is. Do you? After that, a darker theory began to surface among physicists and astronomers brave enough to speculate freely. What if 3i Atlas isn't a probe in the traditional sense? Not a scout, not a messenger, not even an emissary. What if it's a test? A tool not meant to inform us, but to measure us. Not to communicate, but to observe how we react. How rapidly we detect anomalies. How deeply we analyze materials that are impossible. How well our most brilliant minds collaborate under pressure. And perhaps most crucially, how our cultures deal with ambiguity. Because a species that is incapable of the abnormal will never escape its gravity well. And one that sees the anomaly but explains it away out of fear may not be ready to participate in anything greater. Seen through this lens, 3 Atlas becomes something far more terrifying than a visitor. It becomes a filter a quiet, drifting evaluation mechanism built to move quietly through emerging intelligent systems and check to see who is brave enough to ask the right questions. When researchers took a closer look at the atomic spectra of the alloys 3 Atlas had released, they discovered something profoundly disturbing. The metals weren't just rare. 
Their atomic resonance frequency is aligned to a pattern not random, not natural. When the emission lines were plotted, they formed a mathematical sequence that is similar to a chromatic scale. Think about that. Metals releasing in a rhythm that develops harmonic intervals. Longer concerning chemistry. It's about structure a structure that resonates with the physics of the universe, possibly as a form of identification or encryption. A physicist made the suggestion that if you made sound from those frequencies, they would resemble a chord progression, not music in the human sense, but a signature embedded in matter. Which means that the three atlases might not just be a probe or a test, 